All right, what's up, guys? Mason the Brock Henderson here. This is Criminal Minds, season eleven, episode nineteen, tribute. Some good, some bad. Um, it's like there's a lot about this episode that I really, really, really want to like. And if you hear noises and stuff, because I've got cats and dogs, well, one cat and two dogs that like to make noise. Yeah, they get annoying. Anyway, there were some things in this episode that really felt like there was potential. Like, bringing Prentice back, great idea. You know, I, I love to see it. But they didn't utilize it that well. They had a, a few good moments with her coming back to the team. But at the beginning, it kind of felt forced. Like, I don't know if it's just me, but that first scene where they finally see her again, and uh, I don't know. Like, it just felt awkward, and I guess maybe that really would happen, you know, first time you see somebody in a really long time, it may be a bit awkward, but it, the acting felt a bit stilted whenever they were doing it, so, I don't know, it was not bad, but it didn't feel like it was as good as it could have been. Um, you've also got this, this killer, copycat killer, who is killing, like, all of the great serial killers. That's an interesting concept, but he's dead by the end of this episode. Like, honestly, I would have loved to get some backstory beyond the opening scene that we got where Prentice was tracking him down and that one uh, Scotland Yard agent got killed. I would have loved to see some of that. You know, maybe an episode about that first, and then we get this episode. So we've actually... But they just introduced this killer who's been killing for a while now. Two years. And then he's gone by the end of the episode. It just felt like a wasted opportunity. Like you could have had the last few episodes of this season be about this killer. Be about them tracking down this killer. You know, maybe not every episode about him, but introduce him on this one. The next two episodes, they're trying to find out where he would go next. Maybe he's hiding out somewhere before he kills the next victim. And then the final episode is about trying to stop him. That would have been really good. That would have been really interesting. But no... By the end of this episode, bam, dead. Um, well, he didn't do it himself. Prentice did. Anyway. So I, I didn't like the waste of potential there. And also, it feels like Prentice is not coming back on the show. It I, wasted opportunity again. Obviously, you know, if you're not able to get um, whatever her name is. Um, crap. Hang on. I can't remember her name now. The the actress that plays Emily. If you're not able to get her back on the show, obviously you can't do that. So I'm not going to completely blame them if that was the reason why she's not back on the show. But it kind of feels like they're just kind of teasing us. Like, oh, look, guys, remember how fun it was whenever Emily was on the show? And, you know, she's here with the team again. That final scene where they're, you know, she's drinking with Garcia and then JJ comes in, Rossi steps in, Reed comes in. That was fun. I enjoyed that. It, it felt like the old days, you know, back when the team was a big part of the show. Uh, within, you know, this year has been a bit better, but like I said about season 10 before, um, season 10 didn't do a very good job of showing us the team. It was mainly about serial killers the whole time. Um, and I, I felt like that's, you, you can't have this show and not talk about the team that much, you know, that... Part of the reason why a lot of people watch this show is because the team is so good. So it, it did feel like kind of a callback to that back in the time whenever the team was the big focus. You know, that was you watched it because you wanted to follow along with this team, find out how they were going to solve the mystery. And anyway, um, so yeah, overall, I just felt like this was an episode that had the potential to be something greater if it stretched beyond this one episode, but it didn't. You have the introduction of this serial killer who's been killing for two years now, you have Prentice coming back on the team, and then you have the case solved and Prentice pretty much having her, you know, ha having another meal with the team, like another one last meal with the team. And it's all in one episode. It's like, Introduction, introduction, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> I, I don't I don't understand that. I don't understand why they couldn't have tried to stretch it out just a little bit more. Because that would have been so much more interesting. It would have 
really added to this episode instead of just making it feel like a going. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm way too maybe I'm way too picky, but it really does feel like there's so much more to do here. Um now that being said, it does beg the question where the final few episodes of the season are going to go. Um, obviously, in this one, they talk a bit more about Derek, uh, some of which felt a bit forced into conversation. Uh, you know, because where where sometimes the conversations on the show will feel very natural. Um, you know, somebody will come up and see that somebody's struggling with something. Some of the conversations in this one, like I said, the acting felt a bit stilted. Part of that was because the conversations didn't feel very natural. Um, whenever they show up to the first crime scene with Rossi, Prentice, and JJ, Rossi kind of forces the conversation of, you haven't asked about him once the entire ride here. It's like, oh, Morgan? I'm just like, what? Like, that's how you're going to get her to talk about Morgan? And she's just going to know whenever he says, you didn't talk about him, she's going to know you're mean Morgan? Like, I don't know. That one felt a bit weird. Whenever Prentice was on the plane with the team, and, you know, Lewis had asked her about uh, the, the Scotland Yard agent, you know, were you close to her, stuff like that. Um, and she was like, no. And you could tell she was lying. And I'm like, come on, Tara. Like, <laughs> you're supposed to be a profiler at this point. You should be able to see she's lying. Anyway. But she's on the plane with the team. She's like, I lied to you. You know, I, I was close to her. And, and she just starts telling this whole story about how, you know, I'm the one that told... Nobody even asked her. Like, she was having a dream, the, the same nightmare she was having, except this time it was JJ um, that was being killed and not the Scotland Yard agent. She just starts telling them. Most of the time, it's like, hey, look, are you sure you're okay? Because there's something you need to talk about. We're all here for you. And then she tells them. But in this case, she just, like, wakes up from the dream. They're all kind of looking at her, like, worried. And she's like, okay, so the Scotland Yard agent was actually, I was closer to her than I told you. And she just spills the beans. I'm like, that didn't, like, what? <laughs> if, if it was this easy to tell, why didn't you tell her from the beginning? Why lie about it and then come clean instantly? You know, I, I don't know. It was just, it, it felt very forced for a lot of this episode. Um, so, the biggest problem is I wanted to enjoy this episode so much. I really wanted to because Princess is returning. You know, where did this show go from here? You just lost one of the main cast members that's been in from the beginning. Where do you go from here? Bring Princess back. Okay, that's a great idea. You know, I want to see that. Didn't take advantage of it. Didn't take advantage of the killer that they introduced. Didn't take advantage of Prentice being back. It all just felt very much like wasted potential. Very similar to Batman v Superman, but I don't do movie reviews, so <laughs> just just gonna throw that out there. But it really it really did feel similar to my thoughts on Batman v Superman, in that because this is exactly what I want to see, the fact that it was so average makes it feel like it's more it's like if this were not if I were not having high expectations for this show it would have been average you know I would have been like okay that was a pretty good episode but because I did have high expectations I was like Prentice is coming back when I, when we when they introduced this killer this copycat killer that was killing like all of the great serial killers raised my expectations even more so the fact that it was average just made it feel like it was a bad episode. And I hate that. I hate it whenever I have high expectations, it ends up being average, and then I feel like it's not, it was a bad episode because of that. It's frustrating. It's very frustrating. So, overall, you know, I'm not, I, I am disappointed, but I'm not going to say it was the worst episode ever. I'm just going to say that, it was disappointing and it felt like it had more potential to become something better. So hopefully these last three episodes they've got some sort of idea of what they want to do. Uh, hopefully they've, it will not just be a, you know, oh look, here's a bad guy thrown in at the last minute that you know, nobody knew about but it's going to make it intense and 
I don't know. I, I want them to be clever about it. I want them to do well with introduction. Because, um, uh, honestly, I just want it to be good from here. Because this one was not as good as it could have been. So, that's my opinion. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Uh, were you disappointed too? Was there anything you would prefer they do more? Uh, if there's anything I forgot to talk about, you know, because I'm so frustrated, just let me know down in the comments so we can talk about it. Um, and leave a like and subscribe for more Criminal Minds. I'll see you at the next review. Peace out.